Good morning, folks. We've got some top-level news articles today. More on Earth's magnetic field, solar forcing of the atmosphere. We've got an extreme planet to see, and we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun, one scream shy of quiet. The one comes bottom left, near the incoming limb from the approaching sunspots. We'll zoom in here to show that eruption in both 193 angstroms of ionized iron and 304 angstroms of ionized helium in red. As you can guess from the directionality of the CME, it is heading southward into the side from our planet's perspective, Soho coronagraphs there. We've still got the frowny face on the sun, but the sunspots making the fun-looking feature have advanced their decay, especially the line of spots facing Earth on the south. They've got nothing going at this time and we'll begin focusing more on the incoming sunspots, both north and south, here tonight. That extreme exoplanet they've discovered is a bit smaller than Earth. It's largely iron, what they call a sub-Earth, or perhaps a better name would be a super-Mercury. It orbits super quickly, in less than eight hours, and is scorching hot due to its proximity to the star. Hopefully we recall the importance of low-latitude ionospheric modulation during space weather events. Here we see that when the ground magnetometers pick up the disruption, the conductivity profile and electric currents within the ionosphere begin to enhance. That leads right into the global electric circuit. And speaking of things that seem to magically translate one excitement area to another, they're finding that a mysterious atmospheric bridge connects the northern waters to the tropical Atlantic, but that it only translates cold spells, not the hot ones. This would be tremendously amplified in the scenario where ice lost chills and freshens the northern oceans, leading to that global cooling that we've seen in numerous papers over the last few years. And our top story today is one on the geomagnetic field and its variations at the time scale upon which we place the greatest focus. The paper did a lot, including showing events at the last half cycle, the NOAA event, and forgive my notes on the image as they've also pegged millennial scale Dansgaard Oshker events as well. But perhaps most importantly is the long scale in the approximate 10 to the fourth years, which is the 10,000 year range. Many studies like this do not try to peg it any closer than just an order of magnitude scale, and that 10,000 year approximation is the approximately 12,000 year cycle we seek. You can see that they also mention afterwards those millennial scale oscillations. The field is getting it now at every turn. That's the science field, not the Earth's field. That thing is in trouble as we are. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, you have a new deeper look coming tonight. That's at suspiciousobservers.org, and your weekly podcast was yesterday. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.